Yo. So, uh, essentially, uh, this one, this upload is for me. I've had no internet for the past few days. So a lot of the research for this has been using my phone on 3G. It's been crazy hard. Um, a lot of it's been trial and error. It's been a lot slower process than it needed to be just because I didn't have any internet in all honesty. Um, I've been developing my own hovercraft system, physics-based programming, all C++, no blueprints. You're probably thinking I'm bored of using C++, uh, doing hovercrafts by now, because that's all what my group project pretty much consists of. But uh, in all honesty, I am. I'm, I'm actually tired of it. But there's no point now to talk about something for days if you haven't created it and have it under your belt and in your portfolio at the end of the day, you know what I mean? So I'm doing this to look better on paper. Um, this is probably going to be the hardest blog I've ever I've ever done so far, because there's so much to talk about in terms of explaining what I've done. Um, if anyone has any questions about Transfuser, yeah, we got in. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about that, actually. Yeah, fantastic. It's a good opportunity for me to, uh, not for me, for the group to start to start moving forward, making progression. It's actually a, a business venture, in all honesty, because they fund you to start your own business. So uh, that's kind of hectic itself, becoming like running my own business at the age of, what, 22? That's crazy. Um, anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's get back to the physics-based programming. I'll be more than happy to talk about Transfuser later. Um, just pause it for a second, have the door, have the door go off for us quickly. Um, yeah, so this the whole point of the whole point of what I'm going to explain today today is we're gonna we're gonna cover raycasting. Um, I'm gonna briefly talk about how 3D simulations work just to just to give some ground basis for raycasting in honesty. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, damping, suspension, compression ratios. That's part of suspension, and as well as damping in all honesty. I'm gonna talk about gravity acceleration. Uh, mass is going to be covered, but maybe I won't really go into the formulas. I'll probably just uh, gloss gloss over with what I'm doing with these formulas. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's essentially what's going on there. Um, let's let's get into this. So essentially, let's I'm gonna get a random picture of this. Picture was taken from the demonstration we did. Um, what you're seeing in this picture is. There are different people, there are computers, there's me, there's a water bottle, there's hard drives, that kind of stuff, devices. You can clearly see this is not a two-dimensional picture in the aspect of uh, the picture doesn't have any depth to it. I can't pick up the walk into the picture, but at the same time you can clearly see that I don't share the same uh, court, that I, I don't share all the same XYZ coordinates. There are XYZ coordinates in the picture. There is no, it's not just X and Y, um, and that's obvious. So essentially, what graphic software is all about, rendering, game engines, all that, is all about simulating 3D, sim, three, simulating a world. So uh, I'll look at a picture, I mean, I'll look at a game, and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to move forward two steps. But in all honesty, it's just lines of, it's just ones and zeros, it's just lines of code. There's no, there's no world there. It, it's closer to 2D than it'll ever be 3D. But it looks just like, it is, it is a world. It is a world, but it's not a world. It's almost the Matrix right there. Whatever, I don't even care. Um, but yeah, so uh, the way the way we do this, right? In in all in all, let's let's pretend we're doing this from my point of view, since I'm the closest one to the camera in this picture. Um, in real life, if I wanted to see this water bottle, uh, light would shine from the, the light source to the water bottle into my eyes and that would allow me to see the water bottle but the way we uh we do things in 3d simulations that kind of stuff ray, ray casting essentially let's just let's call it ray casting because it is ray casting we uh we shoot lots of rays from the camera from lots of rays from the camera so i'd be shooting rays this way that way this way this way this way this way and so on and if i hit an object well then trace where that ray goes to and if it goes to a light source we can then calculate the light attributes on this object the color from the light the color the innate color of the surface um and yeah that's how we would simulate a system essentially uh transparency would also be calculated from that um yeah yeah i can go on rate that's that's ray tracing though 
tracing what happens after that contact point. Ray casting is essentially just casting lots of rays out and then simulating what we want from, from the from the information we get from casting the rays out. Um, which is we use ray casting in, in this process. Um, I'll, I'll draw you a quick diagram to just explain it a little bit, to make it a little bit more clearer. Uh, let's say this square... Whoa, 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 whoa. So, this circle is is the viewer. Um, view is green. Takes the paint changes every week, I swear. And then there are little. There are bottles of water that I'm trying to. Like, let's keep insisting, yeah, some bottles of water that I'm trying to simulate. So we cast rays out. It's a bit easier with a graphics tablet, but I can't draw for crap, so uh, let's uh, not use a graphics tablet. We cast lots of rays out. Jeez. We cast lots of rays out from the viewer, and when it hits an object, it won't just hit the object once, and it will still hit the object a dozen times we calculate we we calculate the we take the hit distance we trace the distance we take calculate the properties of what it hits so on and so on but just for the purpose of this uh for this vehicle we only care about where it hits the object and the distance between here and uh the viewer or wherever the trace point is and the object. That's all we care about. Um, yeah, so that's, 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 yeah, so I uh, had a couple of issues there, but uh, I'm back, I'm back. Let's start looking at um, some of the physics and stuff applied to it. There's, this is just a list of the, the quick, the quick values I took and I, I work with on my second screen. Um, I spent the past few days doing a lot of research. I've looked into things like, uh, this is force, gravity, acceleration, that kind of thing. Working out what gravity is um, in retrospect uh, to objects, that kind of stuff. Not use, trying to avoid using universal gravity, as in the, the realistic value, not the unreal value. Um, I've uh, looked into suspension, damping, compression ratios. Uh, this is uh, where I spend a lot of my time, honestly, with compression ratios and suspension and damping, because... Uh, that's the spring is the essentially the most important part of a hover vehicle in the game. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into really much showing the code too much because uh, anybody who's truly curious can uh, can ask me. I'm uh, currently loading up Unreal Engine as we speak. Okay, so there's a uh, I'll 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 talk you through it. So um. Yeah, Unreal, Unreal Engine's loaded. My new map. Okay, so spawn. The most uh, important thing you see it straight off the bat is you see those lines. Those are rays. It was come out ray casting out These are rays being shot from four different corners of my collision. It's a it's a box. It's just a box component. It's an empty box. The the mesh you see doesn't really have any value currently. Um, yeah, so depending on the distance from the floor to these components, uh, we will then apply, uh, we'll have a suspension length itself. Um, this is the compression, uh, the, the compression max distance. Um, whenever the trace doesn't reach that distance and it's blocked by an object, we'll then apply the force to push up to it to spring up to the max distance. Just like just like a spring essentially. We can press a spring and then the spring has its own power, its own force, and it pushes back to try and get back to its uh, compression uh, its you know natural form, its compression max rate. Um, compression limit would be the, the correct term. Uh, yeah. Um, when when we're not a hitting an object and we're in the air for example we then apply a force um, on the vector that's below our collision box. 
and uh, we times this by uh, of gravity force. This uh, forces an acceleration change, um, so it does, in fact, act just like gravity because gravity is an acceleration change itself. Um, everything was done using C++. You can see, uh, oh, the controls. It's WASD and you turn with the mouse. It's, this means you have really sharp turning, so you can do whatever the fuck you want, really. Um, it's a little laggy because I'm recording right now, obviously. But you can see uh, I can turn as sharply and erotically as I want. Which is uh, much more fluid than what I've done for what we've done for group, in all honesty. But you see the way it bounces? Yeah? That's uh, the spring right there, and then all stabilize itself. Which is uh, really, 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 really good. Um, let's take off those uh, lines. Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, gravity, we're, we're, deci we're deciding the value between uh, the object and. Uh, the the box component we're using um yeah yeah so there's a downward force there's a upward force being created from the spring fighting gravity there's gravity pushing the object down um what else is there to talk about i think that's it in terms of uh in terms of going into it I uh, would be more than happy to answer any other questions about it, go into further detail. Um, but I think I think that's it in terms of in terms of the physics-based system. I'll, uh, I've got a couple of minutes left, so I'll just talk about transfuser briefly. Um, yeah, so with transfuser, uh, we got into the project. The project starts from the 13th. We'll work all the way up till September, and then if we make it through that stage. Will then be given twenty five thousand pounds to start our own company up and actually, uh, yeah, become our own developers, contract work on contracts, that kind of stuff. Um, let's 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 even close this. I don't want to get distracted by by programming and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking to move out to Leamington Spa because that's where our closest where our, our, our closest headquarter is. Um, the office we'll be working in. Um, Arch, Arch Creator Studios, um, the fantastic, fantastic team of people who run the studios. There's a lot of other teams that develop in that studio, and I've been to the studio, and it's a brilliant place. We'll be looking to move out there maybe around the 26th, the 30th of June, but we'll have to do a little bit of commuting prior to that. Um, the, the project's funded, so money will be released to me throughout the course of the project to cover things like living expenses, development expenses, project expenses, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that's also fantastic. It's brilliant industry experience. We get things like scrum training from industry uh, industry uh, individuals who actually deliver scrum training for other industry company <laughs> companies. So that's fantastic. We're looking to have our first. We're looking to have our first training session um, next week. Next week. Wednesday or so, something like that, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, my, my days are off. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience, so honestly, there's 20 teams so far in Transfuser. Um, so yeah, we just have to do something really awesome to really stand out. We'll have Brains Eden at the end of the, the end of June. And uh, yeah, we've got a couple of things in mind. The fact that we'll be working so closely together gives us even more potential for, uh, for Brains Eden. Um, yeah, just looking to Looking to have a fantastic experience at the moment. I'm probably running out of uh, footage time because I only have the free version of Screencast. I'll probably pay for that later. But I'll be more than happy to answer any questions people have or go into further detail about anything that you've seen on this vlog. Um, whenever, whenever anyone's curious.